How's it going everyone? So for today what we're going to do is we're going to leave get back started with where we left off in class. Um, most of you have the input assembly and the pump out of your transmissions um, and ready for disassembly. Um, we're not going to go too far into the pump because we don't need to at this time so we're going to focus on disassembling this input drum uh, for a 62 TE transmission. This guy right here. Uh, the 62 TE transmission is very similar to uh, the 41 TE with the exception of this is a six speed transmission versus uh, the four speeds that we have in lab. Um, so this should be a, a better, a good alternative to showing everyone how everything's gonna work. Uh, I wanna remind everyone before we started, um, I know some of the video links have broken. I really apologize for that. I am not a video maker and I'm learning this stuff as I go. Uh, so I apologize. I'm also in a giant tin shed and a live shop so there might be some random noises that, that happen in the background uh, from other guys working so I apologize for that I'm gonna do my best with what I got um, so to disassemble this input assembly we have a couple tools um, variety of different screwdrivers of different thicknesses picks and then snap ring pliers uh, we're also gonna be using a special tool called a snap press um, this guy uh, is used to compress the uh, underdrive uh, piston down at the very bottom of the drum um, First thing we're gonna do is, is before I start to tear down any of these drums, is I always like to make sure to pressure test it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the uh, three pressure ports right here for uh, underdrive, overdrive, and reverse to test to see if the drum is actually actuating correctly. So we can see if there's an issue right off the bat. So we have good activation of the drum down and it seems to be holding pressure. Oh, that was my fault. And then the last one should launch it up a little bit. Yep. So you can see using 30 PSI as necessary. This is at 90 PSI at shot pressure, so it will launch it up pretty high. So use that to try to catch it. Makes it a little bit easier to uh, get out of the pump. Um, one of the issues with this particular transmission is it does have a uh, failed bushy um, in the input drum for the pump, so it's actually sticking. So I, I did, ne did need it to actually pop up to be able to get it out of the uh, assembly itself. Um, so our first clutch that we're gonna get dived into uh, with taking this apart is going to be our reverse clutch. So again, using a flat blade screwdriver, you wanna find the end of the snap ring and just pry it out. Being careful to uh, not cut yourself in the process gets a little bit more dangerous once we get down farther in the drum. So what I like to do is, is right off the bat, I like to put everything in the reverse order that it came out right next to the drum assembly. The reason why we want to do that is something like this pressure plate, for instance, has a direction that it needs to go. Now, this one's pretty self-explanatory on how it goes down onto the drum, but it's still one of those things, it's better to do it this way because then you, you, you are less likely to run the risk of putting in something backwards because if you put something in upside down or the wrong orientation, you, you do run the risk of the transmission not shifting correctly or having issues from there. So we're gonna put everything in the reverse order in the exact way that it came out. So our first two clutch discs and one steel is for a reverse clutch. Um, so this along with the uh, holding clutches in the transmission case will give us reverse. Um, it's a real small clutch pack. Uh, there's not real, the high sustained speeds or uh, RPM going through reverse, so they, they only need a little bit of a clutch. Um, what we're looking for is we're looking for any discoloration or grooving uh, or warpage of the clutch pack itself. This one looks pretty good. There is a little, it is a little bit hot on this steel. Um, that's getting to where it is a little bit concerning, but not too bad. It's, it's not too great to wear. Um, our next clutch that we're getting into is going to be our overdrive clutch. So our overdrive clutch is held, to, held in with a snap ring that goes on the outside of the drum assembly, uh, which we got to find the edge to. There we go. And we're just going to pop this up. Again, removing the snap ring in the same order that it came out and lifting up our separator plate. Now this separator plate is a prime example of why you want to make sure you get the orientation correctly. It's probably very hard to see, but there is a hard, uh, bigger lip on this end than there is that end. Now, the manufacturer does put a notation of, of, a, of a little dot. That little dot is gonna indicate that we need it to be down. So again, making sure we're putting it in the reverse order that it came out should be good with, to go right there. Now, right below this separator plate is another snap ring, but the snap ring isn't like the snap ring that's retaining it. This snap ring 
is considered a wave spring. That's so you can sort of see the slight wave that is in this snap ring. This is actually a return spring for this separator plate. Um, it's really, really crucial you get it in the right location. All right, so our next clutch pack is gonna be our overdrive clutch pack. So we're gonna actually take the hub out of the drum and we can uh, inspect the clutches. So we'll put the drum or the hub to one side for a second and inspect these clutches. So we do have some discoloration. Uh, this clutch did get rather hot. Um, nothing that's too out of the ordinary. Um, after the pneumatic test, we were able to see that, you know, everything is functioning correctly. So theoretically, everything in this, in this clutch pack should be good. Um, it's a good idea to hold them together, see if there's any warpage going along, um, you know, making sure to inspect this, the steel plates, you know, note anything that's, that's different with the steel plates versus ones that have already come out. So that's one's looking okay. With our actual hub, we want to make sure that the bearings are good. These are just, you know, thrust thrust washers, um, but these are what act as a bearing for these for these hubs, and they're looking okay. There's no ridges built up on the um, clutch grooves, uh, and the splines are all okay. So this one's this one's looking okay. So the next clutch we're down to is going to be our underdriven. Now our underdriven clutch um, has a separator plate captured between two snap rings. The first snap ring can be a bit difficult to get to so what we're going to do is we're gonna actually take apart take out its drum again inspecting its thrust washer on both ends so it's going to be actually a roller bearing on this side but again looking at the where the clutch rides this one this one feels this one feels better than that one um, which is pretty typical bearing surface is good spines are good and everything's good to go with that so with this clutch pack we're going to need to try to find the groove and using a pick like this is usually pretty good. So a 90 degree pick, you can get one edge of it when you find it inside of the, uh, the drum and kind of pull it out. So we're gonna try to pull one corner out. Maybe we can get it with screwdriver. Yeah, we can. So grab one edge of it and pry out. Um, I like to try to, as much as possible, not use my hands with putting going down into the drum. Uh, these aluminum components are, are machined super sharp um, and you run the risk of cutting yourself very easily. So again, take this separator plate. Again, same thing, this does have a direction, so we need to make sure we're going back in the direction that it, it is. This is a selectable um, plate as well. We're going to be, in a, in a future video, we're going to be measuring clutch pack clearance. Uh, the way that you adjust that is there's selectable sizes of this uh, separator plate. So we're left with one more snap ring um, that we have to get out. This snap ring is a little bit easier than the primary snap ring on the top simply because it uh, it's just there to support the separator plate and not retain it. So again, trying to do your best to Keep all of your hands out just to prevent you from cutting yourself oh, on the bench. And uh, now we can get down and get this uh, underdriven clutch pack out. So again, we're looking for any discoloration, any warpage, anything like that. Uh, this clutch definitely has some, some use on it with the discoloration on the steel plates. Um, but the clutch discs themselves don't look too terrible. Um, so this, this looks like average wear for, a, for this particular transmission, nothing too out of the ordinary. These will get replaced during an average um, overhaul. Um, this particular transmission is going back to the um, uh, factory to become a reman unit simply because of the bushing that's inside of this. It's failed um, along with the rebuild kit and everything. It's over 70% the cost of a new one to uh, rebuild it, so it got replaced. So this is a core unit we're just using for demonstration purposes. Um, now we're left with an empty drum assembly. We have the two clutch baskets and the hub down at the very bottom. Um, what we then need to do is we need to get in and um, remove the uh, apply piston. Now, one thing to note is there is a snap ring up here to remove this, but this is has a very, very large coil spring to return the supply piston to a neutral spot. Um, if you do not use a snap press or another type of press device to actually release the, the tension on this, you can get yourself pretty seriously hurt. So it is a kind of a safety note that we need to make sure that we're, we're paying attention to that. So we're gonna utilize the snap press on the bench here.
try to turn so that the snap ring is easily gotten to and not blocked by the feet. So all we're gonna do is give the snap press a little bit of pressure. Make sure the lock holds. We just need to press it down just a little bit. So you can see we're just down a little bit to be able to get that snap ring out. Get the snap ring out. And then on the snap press here, it does have a lock. So we're gonna disengage the uh, trigger mechanism here to be able to separate it up. So <clears throat> now we have our apply piston. So this is the top of our apply piston. Um, what we're looking for is we're looking for any rips or tears. Um, this is just trans gel. This is normal, normal material that you can find on the bottom of the transmission. This has been overhauled a couple times. Um, because we did the uh, pneumatic test, we know that this is probably gonna be okay. We don't have to put too much effort into it because we already diagnosed that that is, that is working correctly. Here's that big return spring that I was mentioning that, that will fly up in your face if you're not using the proper tools to release this. And then we have the piston bottom. Again, this has a sealing surface here as well as here. So we're looking for any grooves or, uh, or any pieces of clutch material that can be stuck in the bottom of this when we're cleaning this. Uh, this piston assembly usually gets replaced in an average overhaul. It comes in the overhaul kits. So we're looking pretty good there. Now we're left with actually separating the baskets. Um, we have another snap ring right down here at the bottom. Now this isn't under any spring pressure, um, but it can be a little bit of a bear to get out. So what I like to do is, um, you know, possibly get a screwdriver in there to help and assist in getting it out. Um, that way we, we're not, uh, not fighting it too much. The snap ring can kind of catch a groove. So now we're now the baskets and the hub assembly should be free. So just a little bit of a pop up. There we go. So we can separate the hub from the two baskets. The two baskets very, very lightly using two screwdrivers. You pry up because you, you run the risk of cracking the outer basket. Pop that up, need a little bit more to break the surface tension between the seals. There we go. So now we have both drum assemblies, both baskets of the drum assembly apart. Um, so now what we do is there's a variety of different seals that are um, in each one of these baskets and this hub that would need to be replaced during a service. Um, with the baskets themselves, um, you wanna make sure you're not looking for any scoring on the inside or the outside. Uh, this transmission doesn't have any bands. It only has uh, braking clutches. Um, so if this was a band transmission, the bands typically go around these baskets um, and uh, they're, they're, you need to look for scoring, but we're looking for any ceiling areas. So this is a ceiling area and there's a ceiling area down there, uh, making sure those are all in place. This is a return spring that if we were replacing this basket, we'd be uh, taking that spring out as well. We're not gonna need to do that because this, this one is, is, is all right. Same with this guy looking for any scoring. This does have splines down here at the bottom that we need to make sure are okay and, and nice and even. This popped up pretty easily, so we should be good. The actual uh, input shaft or turbine shaft, depending on the transmission, um, we need to make sure in this particular one that there is no movement. So we need to make sure there's no free play, which there isn't. Now that's different between different transmissions. So Chrysler has their RFE um, series of transmissions in rear wheel drive trucks and SUVs. Those do have some play. So you need to make sure um, a little bit of experience under your belt and, and, and feel around. Um, usually it's good to have a known good transmission to take apart. So like a core like this um, isn't always ideal because you might be seeing stuff that's, that's incorrect. Um, as I stated before, this bushing in here um, is what has failed. Um, now, this assembly is about $90 on its own, um, but 
along with all the other parts to freshen up this transmission to make it um, acceptable to put back in the vehicle uh, exceeded the cost of what the vehicle is going to uh, or the cost to rebuild the unit because we're going to need the hub the pump and then you know the, the clutches and, and and wear items inside of it so that kind of deems this transmission um a little obsolete in that manner so so we'll leave it at that um and uh we'll catch you in the next video thank you all for watching and uh we'll see you later